Many scientists believe in the existence of alien civilizations. For them, the question is whether we will encounter them soon or a long time from now, rather than if we will ever encounter them. So imagine a sudden confrontation with members of an alien species. What would be our first step? Surely communicating would be a top priority. But would we ever be able to communicate? How would we communicate? Stick to the end of the video to know your answers. Hello and welcome to Tipsy Alien, where we discuss the most mind-blowing facts about aliens, extraterrestrial life, and space exploration. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you don't miss future updates. Without further ado, let's get straight into this. The only thing we can be certain about exchanging with aliens is scientific knowledge. If the universe's laws are the same everywhere, then different descriptions of these laws should, in theory, be equivalent. This is the motivation behind projects such as the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, SETI, and Messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence, METI. When it comes to language, the single most important factor in human cooperation is things getting more complicated. We can work together in surprisingly large groups because we communicate our intentions. As a result, any technologically advanced alien civilization is likely to have something that resembles language. Can we learn a foreign language? The first stumbling block would be its medium. Humans communicate using a sound frequency range of 85 to 255 hertz and a light frequency range of 430 to 770 terahertz. This is unlikely to happen with aliens who will have evolved differently. Nonetheless, the issue is primarily technical. For example, sped up whale songs that are otherwise inaudible to humans show that it is relatively simple to map alien stimuli into forms humans can perceive. The trickier question is whether we could ever learn the internal structure of an alien language. Existing perspectives in language psychology provide two very different answers. According to the generativist viewpoint, which holds that language structure is hardwired into the brain, that is impossible. It contends that humans have an inbuilt universal grammar with a set of settings, each corresponding to the acceptable order in which words and parts of words can be arranged in a given language system. The language we hear as children activate one of these settings, allowing us to distinguish between valid and invalid word combinations. The key point is that there are only a few grammars. Though human language rules can and do vary, proponents of the generativist model argue that they can only do so within certain parameters. The head directionality parameter, for example, determines whether verbs in a language come before or after their complements, with English being head initial, Bob gave a cake to Alice, and Japanese being head final, Bob to Alice a cake gave. It's extremely unlikely, according to generativists, that an alien species would have the same parameters as humans. According to Noam Chomsky, the leading proponent of this viewpoint, if a Martian landed from space and spoke a language that violated universal grammar, we would simply be unable to learn that language in the same way that we learn a human language like English or Swahili. We are genetically predisposed to speak English, Chinese, or any other human language. However, we're not designed to learn languages that are perfectly usable but violate universal grammar. On the other hand, the cognitive viewpoint considers semantics to be more important than syntax. According to this viewpoint, sentences like quadruplicity drinks procrastination are syntactically correct but semantically meaningless. As a result, proponents of the cognitive view argue that grammar alone is insufficient for understanding language. Instead, it must be combined with understanding the concepts that structure how language users think. We can also look at our world to see how organisms can share striking similarities despite having evolved in very different ways and environments. This is referred to as convergent evolution. Wings and eyes, for example, have independently emerged among animals through evolution several times, and birds in ecologically isolated New Zealand have evolved behaviors seen in mammals elsewhere. The cognitive perspective suggests that human and alien languages may be mutually intelligible. Some argue that even the most advanced human concepts are built on basic building blocks shared by all species, such as past and future, similarity and difference, and agent and object. Suppose an alien species manipulates objects, interacts with its peers, and combines concepts. In that case, the cognitive approach predicts that it may share enough cognitive architecture with humans to make its language understandable. It's unlikely that an alien species that reproduced biologically would lack concepts for distinguishing between genetically related and unrelated groups. According to research on neural networks, languages can be learned without the use of specialized brain structures. 
This is significant because it implies that an innate universal grammar may not be required to explain language acquisition. Furthermore, it appears that there are human languages that do not fit within the universal grammar framework. Though these findings are far from conclusive, the evidence suggests a cognitive explanation. As a result, it may be reasonable to assume that humans can learn alien languages. Obviously, there will always be aspects of an alien language, such as our poetry, that are inaccessible. Similarly, some species may inhabit a mental universe that is only roughly equivalent to that of humans. Douglas Vakoch of METI elaborated on using mathematics as a common basic language in a talk. However, this traditional approach is not flawless, as evidenced by research on interpretations of the Voyager Golden Record conducted by Rebecca Orchard and Sherry Wells Jensen of Bowling Green State University. The recording, which is now on its way to interstellar space on two spacecrafts, included sounds and images intended to show an alien civilization the diversity of cultures on Earth. Even before it was launched, there were concerns about whether an alien civilization could correctly interpret the message. Orchard and Wells Jensen demonstrated several ways it could be misunderstood in their presentation. If it perplexes humans, one can only imagine how aliens, who share no cultural background with us, would interpret it. Of course, the solution to our difficulty may depend on how first contact occurs. If it happens over long distances, we would prefer Vakach's mathematical approach, at least in the beginning. But eventually we'd have to go beyond that. How could we mathematically express emotions or feelings? Language has a greater potential for conveying emotions, but it also has its own issues. Even between English speakers from different cultural backgrounds, miscommunications are common. Perhaps neither math nor language is appropriate. So how would we go about it? We've reached a point where we have more questions than answers. In the 2016 film Arrival, the heroine, a linguist, could communicate with visiting aliens after much struggle. If a day like that ever comes, we will have to come up with solutions quickly, most likely using language. As a result, this workshop type is critical for determining where we stand scientifically, and the answer may be required sooner than we think. Whether we like it or not, there must be someone out there that would like to visit Earth once, and when they do, we should have a way to communicate with them. They might not talk and listen to everything we think. We need to have a way to tackle this problem as soon as possible. What do you think? Will aliens ever try to communicate with humans? Let us know in the comments section. If you found the video interesting, here are two more videos you'll probably like. That's all for today. Please leave a like on the video and share it with your friends.